Hello, uh, my name is John Bruno, and this is April 28th, and it's 2.03 p.m. in the afternoon. I'm going to attempt to set the world record for ET Phone Home for the Atari 800. This project is about being the best in the world at something, however insignificant that thing is. So I decided I would be a world record holder for ET for the Atari 800. It came out a year or so after the notorious 2600 version, which is often cited as being one of the worst games ever made, and majorly responsible for the video game crash of the early 80s. Everybody thought this game was going to be amazing because of the movie tie-in, but because it was so rushed it came out pretty blowful. So about a year or so later, Atari decided to do another ET, and this one was going to be one of the launch titles for their new line of 8-bit systems. They decided to really take their time with this one, and they worked very closely with Steven Spielberg to develop a bunch of new revolutionary game ideas. One of the things that kind of caught me off guard is the scrolling. It's something I didn't even notice when I was a kid. I remember Pitfall not scrolling, just jumping from screen to screen, and in my mind, the first game I ever really remember scrolling was Super Mario Bros. on the NES. So this was pretty big for the Atari era, and even though the world is not huge, it does scroll smoothly in all directions. Uh, one of the other things I noticed about this game was the sound. Uh, when you get really close to one of the bad guys, which are like the, the FBI or NASA people or whatever, uh, it plays the Jaws theme. Which I thought was kind of weird at first, but then I realized, ah, it's, it's a Spielberg project. Like, he can kind of tie in his own music to his own stuff. So you get really close, you get the Atari version of dun-dun, 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 dun-dun-dun-dun-dun-dun. When you're a kid, you don't really think about that. You're just like, oh no, danger. That's the sound of danger. Uh, one of the other things is they had a team working on it instead of just one person, and that was really novel for Atari. Like, they boasted about, like, wow, like, we're trying this new crazy concept of having a team working on a game. I mean, compared to the original E.T., it definitely shows the, a really high boost in quality. Uh, com compared to anything else on the NES. Uh, so the objective of the game is to find all these parts that E.T. needs to phone home. It's kind of hard to tell which each one is supposed to be, but for instance, the speak and spell looks kind of like a grid, and I think the squid thing is supposed to be a fork. When you start the game or press the button on its own, E.T. tells you telepathically what pieces he wants. These parts are hidden throughout the neighborhood, and so you can't see them unless you're really close to them. And also, they won't appear if you're running either. So the one, what the button does is it lets you run, and it also lets you pick up pieces and drop pieces. So you can't run while you're holding a piece because you'll drop it first because there's only one button. And the other thing about running is uh, since you can't see the pieces, you don't want to run all the time. But if you don't run, it's just going to take too long. And also, you need to run to be able to get rid of, away from the bad guys. Once you get all the pieces, you return home and you get the digitized voice that I'm sure took up most of the cartridge, and they're really like stoked about this too. Okay, best double dribble speak ever. So Atari was really proud of that. They're like, it's voice on a computer. This is amazing. And Steven Spielberg really wanted this game to seem achievable, especially to younger people. So they got this idea of making the game end instead of just having it go on forever. This was a relatively new concept for a time where generally it was all about how far you could get in the game before you die. So once you collect all the pieces, you then play through a denouement as E.T., where you make your way through the woods and board the spaceship. And that spaceship very slowly flies away. The end. So that's the end of the game. Although it was a vast improvement over its predecessor in every way, E.T. Phone Home is still for the most part an unknown side note in Atari history. Even though the magnitude of my achievement is infinitely small, I have decided to be the very best in the world at it, and this is my official video submission to Twin Galaxies. Here's hoping they accept it and think I'm awesome. So let's see how I did. One one four two seven four. What would that be? A hundred 
14,274. Does that sound right? So, restating my name, John Bruno. Time, I forgot, is 2.09 p.m. And the date is Wednesday, April 28th, 2010. World record holder? Not the best.